Promises? Promises but never results. That is the Liberal government's trademark, Mr Speaker. Despite the fact that it knew for months that Passport Canada was going to fly off a cliff, the Minister accelerated the process. Now, people are being told to go online in order to pick a number, to go in line in order to get a passport, where people, was waiting, where people were waiting all night in the rain for a number. But now it's another new strategy. It takes 15 weeks to f train someone new. Another minister says that she hired a lot of people. So who will finally take the responsibility of this monumental liberal fiasco? The Honourable Minister for Families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I understand the frustration of Canadians uh, with regards to passports. Starting yesterday, we've, we have had a new strategy, and people outside of Guy Favreau, for example, have received uh, appointments. 250 people in Laval and Saint Laurent got to talk to an upper manager, they have been able to get an appointment, and now triage is happening in 12-hour blocks to make sure that everyone can travel in time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Miguel Mr. Speaker, just imagine, this government is so disconnected that it cannot even give simple services to Canadians. It's only today that they've started talking to people waiting outside, Mr. Speaker, but don't you worry. The Minister says that now there's toilets, which is great for the rest of the summer. We are looking forward to a very long summer. Inflation. All Canadians have been affected by a rapidly rising cost of living, the highest level of inflation in 40 years when there was another Trudeau at the head of the country. All responsible countries are reducing gas taxes. Why is this government not doing, uh, is refusing to do what is essential for people? The Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we understand that the cost of living is an important issue for Canadians. And that is the reason for which we have taken tangible and concrete measures to help the most vulnerable Canadians. We have increased benefits for Canadian workers. So a three-person family will now have $2,400 more in their pockets this year. We've increased old age security for seniors, a $815 increase. The Honourable Member for Miguel Ticlirable. But no one's listening, because no one believes that this will have an immediate effect on people's lives. We Burnaby South. Speaker, the cost of living is hitting Canadians uh, tremendously hard. We've shared stories uh, as New Democrats about the, the Canadians uh, that are suffering right now can't afford the groceries, can't afford gas. On top of that, CMHC has put forward a report that we are 3 million homes short of ensuring that Canadians can find affordable homes. In fact, that people will not be able to find a home they can afford. Given how serious things are, the government is just waiting to see that it'll go away. It's not going to go away on its own. The government must act to help people now. When will they act to support families who are in need of help? Here, here. The Honourable Minister. What do I get? Very, very aware of the need to build more housing supply in Canada. That's why we've introduced the Housing Accelerator Fund. Uh, that is why we are investing $4 billion that, is, that will go directly into municipalities so that they can uh, build more housing supply and that they can do it faster. faster. We're the only government in Canadian history that has taken that step to create systemic change to produce more housing supply. In addition to that, we are also investing in more supply through the Rapid Housing Initiative, more investments in co-op housing, and more investments in the, in the co-investment program. Member for Burnaby South. We know that the cost of living is going up and, that, ha and it, that it has struck families hard. It's more and more difficult. It's sometimes impossible to make ends meet. In these difficult times, we've also read a recent report that says that if the government does not act in Canada, people will not be able to find housing. So, taking all of this into account, when will the government finally and rapidly act in order to help families during this crisis? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, 
We understand that the cost of living is a very important issue and a very difficult issue for many, many families in Canada. And we also understand that housing is one of the most delicate issues, and that is the reason for which our budget targeted this issue in particular. It's a complicated issue, but housing is essential. We will invest. We will build housing units for Canadians, and we will give the most vulnerable people 500 extra dollars for housing. Speaker, at 7.7% inflation is at another record high. The price of gas this week in Dryden is 2.15 a litre. It's 2.20 in Kenora and over 2.30 in Red Lake and Sioux Lookout. Yet this government is the only in the G7 that is not considering a plan to provide immediate relief at the pumps. Mr. Speaker, when will this government get serious about the affordability crisis we are facing and provide a real plan to address inflation? Well, Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I've said, uh, Canada is focused very much on two elements of this. The first is addressing the affordability challenges facing Canadians. That is something that is critically important for all government members on this side of the House. My colleague, the Minister of Finance, uh, went through a number of initiatives that are underway to try to address the affordability issue for Canadians. But we are also working internationally to address the energy security crisis by increasing production of oil and gas alongside our American counterparts, our Brazilian counterparts and others, to ensure that we're actually stabilizing global energy markets and bringing prices down. The Honourable Member for Charleswood St. James, Sidney Boya, Headingley. Mr. Speaker, this week Canadians received even more devastating news caused by this government. Inflation rose to 7.7 percent in May. This included a 12 percent rise in the price of gasoline and a 9.7 percent increase in the prices of groceries, all basic necessities for working families in my riding. When will this Liberal NDP government finally acknowledge that their plan to pour gasoline on the fire with their out of control, excessive spending is actually hurting Canadians? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives really need to pick a lane when it comes to economic policy. Half of the time, Mr. Speaker, we hear them proposing tax expenditures. And then the other half of the time, they accuse us of spending too much money to support Canadians. Now, I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, during COVID, we did support Canadians, and that was the right thing to do. And we had a policy that was relentlessly focused on a jobs recovery. And Mr. Speaker, it has worked. 117% of jobs recovered, compared to just 96% in the U.S. The Honourable Member for Kelowna Lake Country. Well, Mr. Speaker, that comment is completely out of touch with what people are going through. That's right, yeah. You know, the last time inflation was this high, my parents were buying our first family microwave. We had a Prime Minister with the same last name as the current one, and Joni Loves Chachi was the new sitcom. 7.7% <laughs> inflation isn't just a number. An Ipsos survey found more and more Canadians believe that their standard of living is decreasing. A dad in my riding said his family of five is now spending $400 a week on food, and he goes without meals so his kids can eat. When will this government stop making excuses, stop blaming others, and do anything to tackle inflation. Deputy Prime Mr. Speaker, we absolutely understand that the cost of living is a real challenge for Canadians. And I would start by pointing out that having a job is the single most important thing for most Canadians when it comes to affording the cost of living. And that's why an unemployment rate at 5.1% is really, really important and something we work together to achieve. I also want to say, Mr. Speaker, I know that Canadians are smart. And I know that Canadians understand inflation is a global phenomenon, Mr. Speaker. This is Vladimir Putin's inflation, and Canadians know it. 
The Honourable Member for Mission Metzke, Fraser Canyon. Well, Mr. Speaker, inflation might be over 7% nationally, but it's over 8% in British Columbia. And these levels have not been seen since the last Trudeau was in office. Families in Mission Metzke, Fraser Canyon are struggling to put food on the table. They're struggling to pay $2.30, $2.30 for a litre of gas, and they, they can't even afford to get to work. Yet this government refuses to act. Now, last week, Scotia Bank's chief economist came out and they basically said, Government of Canada, rein in your spending. So if the, conser if the Liberals won't heed the advice of the Conservatives, will they at least listen to one of Canada's top economists and stop screwing over Canadians? Yeah. Again, I just order. I just want to remind the honourable members to use their language judiciously, like you were in a classroom talking to students. I'm sure nobody would want to hear language like that in a classroom if they were talking. And there are children watching this program, so let's try to keep it clean. Beyond, hold it. Whoa. Order. Order. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government absolutely understands that fiscal restraint is an important part of our fight against inflation. And Mr. Speaker, that is what we put forward in the budget in April, as recognized by S&P with our AAA credit rating. In fact, Canada is tied with the U.S. for the fastest rate of fiscal consolidation of debt and deficit reduction in the G7. But Mr. Speaker, I know that member opposite ran in the election last year, and I'd like to remind him that on the campaign trail, they actually proposed more spending, a bigger deficit than we did. Speaker, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The last time inflation was this high, the Prime Minister's father was in office. A recent Ipsos poll reveals that 72% of Canadian families with kids are worried about putting food on the table. And Food Banks Canada is reporting that 23% of Canadians are eating less than they should due to rising food costs. There are many great family traditions, but making Canadians poor shouldn't be one of them. <laughs> when will this government learn from the past and fix inflation before it gets worse? There he is. Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we absolutely recognize that affordability is a real challenge for many Canadian families. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, we are so glad that in this year's budget and in last year's budget, we put in place affordability measures that are coming on tap now, that are supporting Canadian families today in meaningful ways. Let me talk about the Canada Workers' Benefit. This is for our most vulnerable working poor, $2,400 arriving starting in April. For Regina Louvan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as my father always said, Trudeau times were tough times back in the 80s, Mr. Speaker. So we have the highest inflation rate since 1983 at 7.7%. We've heard the tired old talking points, and we know this finance minister's only solution is to increase spending and raise taxes. That is simply not working. Now more than 72% of Canadians are hard to find it hard to make their paycheck last till the end of the month, Mr. Speaker. This government only cares about their rich friends and elitist donors, and they really are out of touch with the realities of families across Saskatchewan. Isn't that the truth, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. You know, Mr. Speaker, when I grew up, the saying was actually Tory times are tough times, and that's what Canadians in the prairies understand. going to interrupt. I'm having a hard time hearing and I've got I've got speakers on all sides of me here and I, it's it's being very tough to hear so I'm just going to ask everybody to calm down. 
<laughs> I know, I know, by the sounds of it, everybody wants to get back to the part of the country that they come from so that they can be with their constituents. So let's see if we can get this done peacefully and nicely so that we can all go off and say goodbye for the summer. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Okay, Mr. Speaker, thank you. So let me tell you what is really out of touch. What is out of touch is not to understand that the single most important thing for the vast majority of Canadians is to have a job. And that is why we will never apologize for a relentlessly jobs-focused approach to the post-COVID recovery. 117% of jobs recovered compared to just 96% in the U.S., Mr. Speaker.